Namaste. So this video marks an important turning point in the history of our channel and our teaching and our community. Let me explain. Up to now, we have been talking about the past, really, the great scriptures, the great teachings, the great wise men, and how their teachings shaped our understanding of spirituality and life, and how they have uh, improved our prospects for our future life. But now we want to, be, instead of being reactive to the past, we want to become proactive towards the future. And how we're going to do that is through the quaternity principle. So what is the quaternity principle? Well, we've talked about it often enough. You know, anytime you want to measure something or analyze something, you have to have some standard. You have to have some unit of measurement or some a collection of categories to classify things. So, what is the one thing that all human beings, not even human beings, all sentient beings have in common? What is the one thing that is the basis, that is the substrate, the universal law that applies to all beings. Of course, that's consciousness. Huh? Consciousness is the one thing every sentient being possesses. And we've analyzed consciousness on this channel by means of the Vedas and the wise men like Ramana Maharshi into four categories. The four categories are waking consciousness, jagrat, dreaming consciousness, svapna, deep sleep consciousness, sushupti, and the fourth, turiya. Now, turiya is also synonymous with enlightenment, but its real meaning is it is the root of all the other consciousness. It is the substrate. It is the ground or the container for all the other types of consciousness. Now, we're not talking about the contents of consciousness here. We're talking about the nature of consciousness itself. This trishul, this trident, signifies something very, very profound, that these three types of consciousness are actually one. So this is a very profound principle, a, a very powerful thought. And if you apply it by investigation in your own life, you soon become a master of your own consciousness. Huh? We've given so many methods, so many different types of meditation, so many different concepts and ways of looking at things according to consciousness, that this should be the measure, this should be the standard, this should be the unit of measurement to which everything is compared 
and by which everything is measured and analyzed. Now, in human society, we have made some really, really serious mistakes. And one of those mistakes is, over the last few hundred years, measuring everything in terms of money. This is because people of a mercantile mindset, merchants, traders, huh, have taken over basically the governance of society and used their money power to uh, basically take over the governments around the world and make them do their bidding. And because of that, now we have an unsustainable situation in the world. The situation is that too much wealth has become concentrated in the too few hands. And as a result, they're making policies in the government that are favorable for them, but not for the other 99 point something percent. This cannot last. It will not last. Now, I've been studying different teachings about uh, macroeconomics and global politics and so on. And, for example, Ray Dalio and uh, this wonderful book called the, the Fourth Turning. The Fourth Turning is about how society goes in cycles. And Ray Dalio's analysis also backs it up from a macroeconomics point of view. Society goes through four cycles every 80 to 100 years. And at the end of the fourth cycle, which he calls the fourth turning, there's a huge breakdown in society and everything is restructured on a new and different platform, a new basis, a new form of measurement. The last time it happened was the Great Depression followed by World War II. Now we're again in a Great Depression and almost certainly a Great War will follow because this is the law of history. And it's been repeated again and again and again for the last thousands of years. And the reason for that is, again, the merchants have taken over control of the society and influenced the government to make favorable policies for them. Everybody else is suffering. So, of course, that's going to end in massive inequality and revolution. It happens every single time. So, in World War II, the revolution started in Germany. The Weimar Republic went bankrupt. There was hyperinflation. The people rebelled, kicked out the old government, and guess who took over? Hitler. Now, in the U.S., the dominant country in the world today, the uh, wealth inequality has led to another revolution. And they've, again, voted in a merchant as a president. And look at the damage. Just look at the havoc that this idiot has caused. But he was empowered by the electorate. Why? <laughs> they're sick and tired of being led by merchants, but they're so stupid that they elected another merchant. Anyway, it can't last. It's unsustainable. There will be a revolution, whether it's peaceful revolution or violent revolution, whether it's an economic revolution or a social revolution, that we don't know. Only the future can tell. But... The important point is the structure of society is going to change. And I've also been studying different astrologers like Narasimha Rao and Joni Patri. And they are saying the same thing. They're also saying that this is not just an ordinary fourth turning. 
This is going to be a massive restructuring of society from the ground up that we haven't seen in thousands of years. So the historical record over the last few thousand years proves conclusively that rule by wealth always leads to collapse and revolution. When the mercantile class takes over the government, they always, always get greedy because that's their nature. They're greedy people. They have no sense of dharma, no sense of honor or truth. Truth gets sacrificed on the altar of greed and the rascals just lie, 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 like advertising. You know, my first job right out of college, right out of conservatory, was making music for advertisements. I lasted a little over a year because I got so disgusted with the manipulation of the truth and the outright bald-faced lies in the advertising game. So anybody with principles, anyone with actual morals or ethics is going to be against this rule of wealth. See, this is called oligarchy. Oligarchy means the rule of the wealthy. So we have this oligarchic society for the last few thousand years. And what has happened every time there's a revolution, a breakdown of society and people suffer. So what I'm suggesting is that we restructure the society to base everything, to base the measurement of everything and everyone on the development of consciousness. This is the way it was back in the previous ages before the current Kali Yuga. And because of this, society was decentralized, it was more robust, and if anything went wrong, it could be corrected. It didn't have so much uh, rigidity uh, because the rigidity comes from its being based on a false idea. You can't correct something when the, the means of correction is based on a lie. So what I'm suggesting, and the next few videos I'm going to explain in detail, is how society can be restructured on the basis of consciousness so that it's actually fair to everyone that everyone gets what they need and deserves. Huh? And they get to act, they get to work in such a way that is in harmony with their natures, but without causing harm or stress or inconvenience to the other members of society. And this is actually the ancient way. You know, I'm very, very fond of the ancient ways. So in the next few videos in this series, we're going to discuss in detail how society can be restructured in terms of consciousness. And we'll show how this fourfold division of consciousness has been used in the past to structure the society so that everyone has uh, the freedom to be and do what they really want and to also redress and adjust and correct anything, any wrongs in society so that they have true equality of being and justice in life. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum.